Hi, I'm Malika Bilal, and you're in the stream. Today, from poverty to parliament, we'll speak to Ugandan Afro pop star and newly elected MP, Bobby Wine. Uganda's Robert Chagulani, better known by his stage name Bobby Wine, grew up in one of Kampala's poorest neighborhoods. To his East African fans, he's known as the Ghetto President. And over the past decade, he's made a name for himself as a musician and social activist, speaking out against what he sees as injustices in his country. Now Bobby Wine has started a new chapter in his career, from ghetto president to real-life politics. Winning his district in a landslide election, the newly sworn-in Member of Parliament says he wants to inspire more young people to get involved in politics. In Uganda, about 80% of the population is under the age of 35. So today, Bobby Wine is taking your questions via social media. You can take part in today's interview by tweeting your comments, as always, with hashtag AJ Stream. And now, Bobby joins us from Kampala. Welcome to the stream, Bobby Wine. I want to take us back through the musical archives to start this conversation. You are a member of parliament now, but as we mentioned, you weren't always. So let's give our audience a little taste of where you started out. So this is your song, Ghetto. The lyrics are in Luganda, but clearly there are scenes of police brutality, there are images from the neighborhood. Can you describe to us what life was like for you then that made you want to put these scenes to music? Well, um, like um, you might know, I grew up from the ghetto and uh, me and many other Ugandans are on the marginalized side, but I decided not just to cry about it, to talk about it. That's one of the reasons why I went into music, and that's why it has been for us. But I mean, I spent all my whole um, youthful life trying to, you know, create awareness about our plight and trying to show my fellow ghetto youth that there's another, uh, there's a solution, and the solution is uh, within us. So basically, that's how I've lived my musical life. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your youthful life, but I think a lot of people would argue that you're still in that youthful life at, at 35. But I, I want to play a video comment from one of our uh, community members um, who is uh, very congratulatory and uh, excited. This is Anthony, and this is what he had to say. I want to first congratulate Bobby Wine for the landslide victory. He and his wife, Bobby, ran a fantastic campaign and spoke the hearts of many. Now, in Uganda, we have a problem of police brutality, long pre-trial detention, a spineless human rights committee of parliament, a number of laws such as POMA that restrict freedoms. As a legislator, I would like to know what your plans are to tackle the four issues raised to promote democratic freedoms and advance human rights for all. Thank you. So he pretty much laid out all the problems as he sees it in Uganda right now. You've only been a parliamentarian for less than a month. Which of those do you think that you'll be able to tackle? Yeah. Well, um, I went to parliament to be the voice to talk about these things. Um, I'm well aware that not all the solutions lie in parliament. The solution lie in the masses, but I want to be the voice uh, to try and uh, influence uh, other legislators because I know we have some very clear-headed legislators there, but um, at the same time to inspire other people, especially the young people, to take on the mantle, to stand up and be counted, and that way we can you know, create the real change that we want. Mm. 
I, I think that's represented here in this tweet from Kanjumba, who says, the world is changed by examples, not by opinions. So how does he intend to use his life experience to improve the well-being of the masses? But before you answer that, what does it mean to you, uh, explain for us who are outside of Uganda, what it was like to be named the president uh, of the ghetto? Uh, clearly, you were a, a well-known person in your neighborhood. <laughs> what was life actually like? What, is, what did that look like for you? Well, it started like um, it started like like a, a ghetto title, like an unserious title. I'm one of the few ghetto youth that stood up uh, and spoke reality to the powers that be. My peers, especially around the Kamocha ghetto where I grew up from, started looking at me as a leader and naming me as a ghetto president, and that actually gave me confidence to keep uh, speaking for them. So it was more like an artistic title that was later on um, taken serious by people even older than us. And uh, that's how it has been building. And later on, it became a responsibility. It became a title that I could not run away from, but a title that I had to work hard to fit in. And here I am. Mm. So uh, that trajectory, I know it was a lot harder than you're making it sound, but um, um, I appreciate you kind of summing that up for us. I want to share uh, with our audience um, a, a little a, a clip of part of your song, Dimbe. Now, this is uh, the official video was released in 2016, and this was ahead of the general elections. Now, the stream did a show on the general elections and the election of uh, uh, re-election, really, of President uh, Museveni. Um, here's just a little taste of what you said in your song. So those elections saw claims of vote rigging, arrests of politicians, there were delays, there were social media shutdowns. There was a lot going on ahead of the general election. Was this your call to people to say, I'm about to yeah. run. This is my political ambition. What, 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 what did you mean with this song? Actually, I did that song uh, towards the 2016 election. I wanted to call for peaceful elections for calm, and I wanted to call um, upon the leaders to be realistic. Um, there's a verse where I say, um, when a leader overstays in power, then a country is going to go to the dogs. I wanted to call upon the leaders to realize that there was need for change, peaceful change. As you know, we have never had a peaceful transfer of power in Uganda. And through that song, I wanted to call for that. Unfortunately, we didn't get that, but I still believe I played my part. Mm. So a call for change. Our, our community is not certain that it will happen. Some of them, I want to read to you this tweet we got from Ambrose, who says, you will not have an impact because over 80% of parliament belongs to President Museveni. Another person sent us a video comment and uh, they said something similar. This is Jackie, here's what she thinks. NRM having the majority in parliament that is over 300 members of parliament, how do you plan to influence anything in terms of policy? And then NRM is a national resistance movement and that is the ruling party. So you hear their concerns. How are you going to tackle that? Yeah, um, actually, one of the reasons why I managed to get where I am today is because I am optimistic. I don't look at the problems, I look at the solutions. I am well aware that the parliament, the majority of the members of parliament belong to the uh, ruling party, but I believe they also want a better Uganda. I believe that they want a peaceful transition. I believe that they will they have children and will have grandchildren in Uganda. What I present to them is not uh, division but unity. What I present to them is not negative but positive. What I present them is an idea that is going to bind us together, an idea that is going to be the healing of our nation. So yes, there are many in parliament but their, their opinions were not cast in stone. I believe that we can also influence them to think positively. But still, I also want to make it clear that I am not putting all my hope only in the parliament. 
My rise is to inspire as many people as possible to stand up and especially the young people and get involved in the politics of our country. That way, um, even the, 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 the voting um, mass will be increased. I mean, many of our young men and women are discouraged from uh, the politics of our country. If we get um, maybe another 500 Bobby Wines, then that fear will be crushed. Another 500 Bobby Wines. I, I like that I'm smiling at that just because I think uh, uh, at least the musical world would be at a better place and we will see about the political world. But here's a view from Twitter. This is Tabu who says, after your successful entry to parliament, what is your strategy to implement, uh, to empower the youth who are unemployed and need jobs? So before you answer that though, we got a video comment from someone who also is talking about uh, the youth because you mentioned that this is about empowering them. This is from uh, a prominent journalist in Uganda, Mujuni Raymond. This is what he told the stream. My question to Bobby Wine is that all across the world we've seen young people reject establishments. We've seen young people say no to establishment politics, that is political parties that are established and those that are, have been towing the partisan lines. Um, my question really is now, as a new breed of leader that is an independent, but also that has a lot of galvanizing support from young people, what is your leadership going to do for the young people of Uganda? First of all, to get out of the apathy, but also, two to get their interest catered for by the establishments for which lead uh, the political uh, discourse in Uganda. So what do you make of that? And one, do you agree that the youth are apathetic? Um, first of all, um, yes, we have a, a terrible unemployment problem, and that will take more than just me. It will take more than just suggestions. Um, it will take uh, all of us getting together and having a grand plan. But most importantly, it all begins by getting involved. It all begins by building the confidence. When we get involved and when we build the confidence, then we'll be able to influence the policies. Um, the education system, I said it some time before, that our youth mainly, uh, most of them are not only unemployed, but they're unemployable. So if we can devise means of uh, um, improving skills and uh, giving skills to those who don't have them, and even looking at the times, uh, for example, today we tend to want to tackle a 21st, a 21st century uh, problem with uh, solutions of the 20th century. But if we have more young people in the leadership, then we are going to have more updated solutions. Um, secondly, another brother, a journalist from Uganda, asked me how our leadership is going to be. I don't want to call it my leadership because it's not only about me. We have very many smart young men and women out there. The first step is for us to come together and make decisions together, decisions that work for us and decide what works and what doesn't work. But that begins by, uh, it starts with coming together. Of course, your position cannot be without controversy. It's, it's hard to be such a public figure and not have uh, criticisms and, and people um, deciding that some of the things you say uh, are of issue with them. And so one of the instances I'm thinking of in particular um, uh, comes from a uh, 2014 denial of entry into the United Kingdom um, for alleged homophobic speech. Uh, and so uh, in 2016, you changed your tune about that. Uh, this is the article from that time. Singer Bobby Wine apologizes to Ugandan LGBTI over previous backlash. Uh, and a tweet here uh, from someone who says, you recently met with the USA ambassador. Have you renounced violence towards the LGBT community in Uganda? This is from 2016. So now you are a, an MP. And you, you say you represent the voice of the voiceless. Does that include the voices of LGBTQ community members? Well, as a young man, um, there's a certain communication that I used to communicate in. Yeah, but as a leader, you get to know that you, among the people you lead, that different people some you agree with and some you might not agree with, but even those that you don't necessarily um, share the same mindset, um, you're not going to be violent to them. So, yes, um, you see me dealing with leaders 
and people, even those who I defy in ideology with. But as a leader, um, I'm trying to be um, as respectful and uh, maintain my values and my um, opinions. So we apologize for, for the line uh, to you, Bobby Wine, and of course to our audience, because the connection to Uganda is not the sharpest, but we wanted to have this interview with you because our community is really excited about getting to hear you. Um, but that's why there is a slight delay, about five seconds, and it's also why uh, it's a little bit of a choppy uh, video connection. Um, but we, apolog we apologize and we thank you for holding on. I want to bring up this tweet here because you talked about um, this not just being about you, this being about a movement and people behind you. This is a tweet uh, that you sent not too long ago. Today we celebrate people power. Please join me for my swearing in at the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda at 2 p.m. Wear your Uganda flag. So I want to show a little bit of video from this day, the swearing in. You see the faces of people and how excited they are. Take a look. So this is the swearing in ceremony. There you are. Taking the oath. This is on the 11th of July, and and the camera will move around, and you just see people really excited. People are cheering for you inside Parliament. They're shaking your hands. They're clapping. So, Bobby, when I can see you smiling as you're watching this and kind of reliving this moment, what was that like for you? Because you don't see that every day in anyone's Parliament. You don't see it in Congress here in the United States. What was that like, and why do you think there was such excitement? Well, I was humbled. It started like a small idea. Then it became big. Then I told it about my friends. Some got excited and some got nervous. And of course, some got real scared. But this is something that has been growing in us. Um, it's, I want to make it clear that this is not about me at all. This is about us. I only talked about something that has been in people's hearts and people's minds for a long time. As you can see, I'm only a rallying point of so much that has to be solved. So that should um, show us that our people are so ripe for change. They just want to find a rallying point, a reason to get together. And now we have reason to get together. We see the opportunities around us. We see like it's a birth of a new generation. It is a beginning of a long journey, but we know it's going to be a journey to success. That's mm -hmm. why we were excited. <laughs> so I, I want to bring this up here. This is Valentino. Um, and I, I think our online community feels the excitement, but some of them are cynical. Uh, Valentino says, don't talk of change. Talk of transformation within the system because you are in the system now. Another person writes in, this is Sean, who says, Parliament has its own way of swallowing the good from their constituents. And then there's the issue of balancing legislation and national politics. So this idea, Bobby, of now you're part of the system, now you are a politician, even if you don't necessarily like that word, what are you going to do to ensure that you do not become like those who you criti you've criticized? Well, I'm not going to become like one of them because I know what I am. I know who sent me. I know that I'm not in Parliament on my own. I'm in Parliament because people sent me there to represent them. For as long as the people who sent me there are still there, I am going to be serving them. So there is a concern, though, uh, Bobby, uh, and, and it's represented here with this headline that we saw uh, just today. This is August 2nd. Police recruits have scores to settle. That's your quote there. Uh, but the article talks about how you uh, very recently were detained on the eve of your own election, um, and some of your supporters were also detained. Um, of course, in the past, the stream has covered um, pre- and post-election violence, uh, really. Uh, the opposition, of course, does not always um, enjoy the safety of having that position in Ugandan politics and society. Do you ever fear that you're going to run into more trouble? Well, uh, fear is not part of my program. Uh, when I got into this, I had seen what was happening to all other opposition leaders and uh, to all other activists. However, I wanted to be different. I wanted to approach this in a different way. Like Bob Marley said, we run things in a rubber dub style. So as a, 
uh, as a as a, a leader and as a person who wants to do things differently i wanted to stay out of trouble but at the same time to be assertive if you realize um our campaign was a very peaceful campaign we never crossed ways with the police um until that day when the president wanted to use the same venue that we were going to use and even when we were continuously provoked uh, most of our supporters are young people and they were charged they could do anything but we did everything within our power to keep them calm because we believe in peace we believe in peaceful elections and we've been preaching peace all along yes we were detained uh, shortly and re released and I cannot rule out any possibility of being detained in the future but I mean, Martin Luther King said it before, that freedom is not something that is going to be voluntarily given uh, to the oppressed by the oppressor. It must be demanded. And yes, we know that it's not going to be a walkover, but if we stand on our feet and assert our demands, they are going to be reached, especially if we are using the constitutional means of seeking for that change. Mm. So I want to share just a couple more comments here. This is Kakonge on uh, Facebook who says, the road to a successful music career is brutal in Uganda, and the one into politics is even worse, since political decisions in Uganda are made by one man. And he's referencing, of course, the president. So he says, how are you going to prepare the young generation to take over their country uh, like you did uh, in your hometown? But before you answer that, there's someone else who has a video comment uh, who speaks to that same issue on uh, you have finding success in music, will that be able to translate? This is Marie, and this is what she told us. How do you see yourself um, navigating the next five years of your term and uh, successfully completing your projects despite the opposition that you're bound to face uh, as, first of all, a youthful candidate and a former musician who may not be taken seriously and as an independent candidate on all those three fronts? the opposition you will face by the incumbent political party, which is NRM. I'd like to know how you will, you hope to navigate all those issues. Thank you. Bobby Wine. Yes, um, first of all, Kakonge said that the road to music stardom is rough and to politics is even rougher. I want him to know that the hardest nut is a nut that has been burnt by the sun. I've been burnt by the sun, and you can't be sure um, we'll go through there, especially if we know that the fire that burns inside us burns hotter than the fire that we are going through. We'll definitely get there. Uh, my sister was asking um, how I plan to go about it and uh, how, where I see us in the next five years. I believe that if we keep coming together as a people, as Ugandans, if we keep dropping the interest in what separates us and picking interest in what binds us together. So with that, I'm going to end with two tweets here. Thank you so much for your time. But the first one uh, shows really the humor of uh, Ugandan citizens. This is that guy. He says, who is the internet service provider for Bobby Wine's interview with AJ Stream? Because your connection is breaking up. But even with all that said, our audience members are still holding on to your every word. Uh, this is a, a, a tweet from Amwoju who says, Bobby Wine has given hope to many struggling youth in Uganda. The future is bright. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, Bobby Wine. And thank you, of course, to our community for weighing in with your tweets, your Facebook comments, and your video comments. This conversation can continue online with hashtag AJStream because Bobby Wine is on Twitter. We'll see you there. I'm a good